Hello guys, I'm Yadik Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Obsolete Beginners. In this video, we will discuss about for and for each looping statements in Java. So basically, there are four types of looping statements in Java, right? Those are while, do while, for, for each. So out of these four statements, we have already discussed about while and do while statements in our previous video. So in this video, we'll mainly focus on the for and for each looping statements. So generally, these looping statements are used to execute any particular piece of code continuously until the condition is dissatisfied, right? So until the condition is actually failed, we are going to execute this piece of code in a loop manner. So that is why we are going to call this one as a looping statement, okay? So here, first we will look at the for loop, then we will go to for each loop, and in the end, we will look at the differences between for loop and for each loop, okay? So first, let me write the syntax for for loop. So this is the syntax for for loop, okay? So first we need to write for keyword, then open the parentheses and close the parentheses, then open the curly braces and close the curly braces. So within the curly braces, we need to write the statements that we want to execute. Okay. So here within the parentheses, we have three expressions actually. Okay. So these are three expressions. So each expression will be separated by semicolon. Okay. So the first expression is initialization, then termination, then incrementation or decrementation. So basically in the loop, what we will do? We will execute any piece of code based on some condition, right? So that condition will be coming and sitting in place of this termination part. So if the condition is actually failed, we are going to terminate the loop. So that is why this is a termination expression. Okay. So in the condition, how we will write, we will write something like I less than 20, right? So this I value should be coming from somewhere, right? So that I value should be initialized first. So that initialization will be done in the first expression. Okay. This is an initialization expression. So here we are going to initialize some variable and that variable we are going to use in the termination condition. Okay. Then here in the last one, in the last expression, we are going to increase or decrease the value. Okay. So that is why we are calling this one as an incrementation or decrementation expression. Okay. So basically here, if you observe one thing, this initialization part will be invoked only once. Okay. At the starting of the for loop only, this will be executed. For example, if I give int i equals zero, only once the variable will be initialized, right? You don't want to initialize the variable every time. I mean, every iteration, you don't initialize the variable, right? So only first time you will initialize the variable, but for every iteration, you are going to check the condition and you are going to increase or decrease the value, right? So the first expression will be executed only once and the second expression and third expression will be executed for every iteration, okay? So here I'm going to show you one basic example. So I want to print one to 10 values here. So for that, I want to write the for loop. Okay. So how do I write the first? We need to write the for keyword, then open the parentheses and close the parentheses, then open the curly braces and close the curly braces. So first I need to initialize the variable, right? So I will take one variable name as I. So int I equals zero. Then I need to write some condition here. I want to print the values from one to 10. Okay. Basically my initialization should be starting from one. Then from one to 10, I want to print. So for that, I need to write the condition. What is the condition? I less than or equal 10. So even 10 also, I want to print in the console, right? So that is why I'm giving I less than or equal. To. Okay. Then again, semicolon. Then the last expression is incrementation or decrementation. So in this part, I want to print from one to 10, right? That means I'm increasing the value. So here I'm taking the value as one, right? So from one to 10, if you want to go here, we need to increase the value. That means incrementation I need to perform. So I plus plus. Okay. So inside this one, I need to just print this I value. So this I value is having every time a new value, right? First I is initialized with one. So next time it will be two. Next time it will be three. Next time four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? So after 10, this condition will be dissatisfied. So this loop will be terminated. So I need to print the value here. So I will say I. So let me just remove this one. So this syntax we don't require, right? So now let me execute this one. So now in the right side console, you can see one to 10 values are printed here, right? So this is how we basically use the for loop. Okay. So this is a basic example actually, but the for loop is actually used for iterating the arrays and collections also. Okay. So you can use the for loop for iterating the arrays and you can print the values of those arrays also. Okay. So in my previous program, I have shown how to create the arrays and how to print the values, right? So here, if you look at this one, I'm creating one array and I'm trying to print all the values using sysout statement here, right? So my array length is actually five. So I have written only five sysout statements. Just imagine that my array length is hundred. Okay. So in that case, I need to write hundred sysout statements, right? So to avoid that, what we will do, we will use for loop for printing the array values. Okay. So let me just copy this array. So this is the first example. So let me just comment this one. So next one is this one. So here. 
let me change this one to arr okay so this is my array i want to print all the values from this array so now i need to first write for then i need to initialize some variable right so let me initialize the i value with zero because the index in array will start from zero right so that is why i'm initializing the value with zero then i less than first i want to find out the length of this array then until that length i want to iterate the array right so that means until this condition is dissatisfied i want to iterate and print the values so how to find the array length we need to write arr dot length arr means the array okay then semicolon so here the incrementation part comes because the i value is zero right so i need to increase the value so i plus plus okay so let me open the curly braces so within the curly braces i need to write the statements okay so just like this here i don't want to print the i value because the i is nothing but here index okay so if you are getting confused i will change this one to index okay so the variable name only this one is okay so you can choose any variable name here so in that case you need to change these values also so because this same variable i am going to use in the condition and in the incrementation part also okay so now i have changed those things so if you print the i value here only the index will be printed that means from 0 to 5 it will be printed right but i don't want to print the index value using this index value i want to get the value of array okay so generally how do you get the value of an array so you will write something like this right arr of 0 means this 0 is an index so in the similar way here also arr of i okay here it is not i it is index okay so here each time the index will be refreshed and that means index will be increased okay a new value will be generated and it will be stored into this index so first time it will be zero then i value will be increased i mean index will be increased so it will become one next time it will two next time it will be three next time four right so like that every time we have a new index so that is why i'm using this index variable and i'm calling like this arr of index okay so it will give the array element value right so now let me run the program so in the console you can see all the values are printed right 5 10 15 25 60 so those are the values that i have stored inside the array right so this is how you use the for loop for printing the values of an array okay so you can use the same for loop for printing the values of a collection also so till now we haven't discussed about the collections so we will discuss about the collections in the future okay so when i am discussing about the collections i will again iterate this topic okay so i will use a for loop and for each loop again and i will show you how to print the values from the collections also okay so for now you just remember that you can use the for loop for printing the values from array like this okay so here if you want to print the values in the reverse order then what you will do so let me just copy this so i will comment this one so here the same array and i want to print the values in the reverse order so in the reverse order means my index will start from the array length right so array length minus one because so if the array size is 5 the last index will be 4 only okay that means minus 1 so that is why i am subtracting one number here so here you need to write the condition right so what is the condition the index should be greater than or equal to 0 so until then i need to decrease the value because here i am starting the value from the array length okay that means last index so i need to decrease the value to reach the 0 index so now if i run this program here you can see i am able to print the values in the reverse order right 60 25 15 10 and 5 so that means you can use the for loop to print the values from the forward direction to backward direction and backward direction to the forward direction also okay you can follow any direction here so that is about the for loop okay so let me comment this so next we will look at the for each loop so this for each loop is also called as enhanced for loop okay so this is a syntax for for each loop so we need to write for keyword only so we are not having any for each keyword actually so for for each loop also we need to write for keyword only but the expressions that you are writing inside the parentheses will differ okay so based on these expressions only it will identify the compiler will identify whether this is a for loop or for each loop so first we need to write the for keyword then open the parentheses and close the parentheses and open the curly braces then close the curly braces so within the curly braces we need to write the statements just like for loop okay so here we have two expressions only okay in the for loop we have three expressions right so here we have only two expressions and we need to separate those expressions by using colon not semicolon okay so the first item is this one is item and the second one second expression is array or collection okay so what array values or what collection values you want to print that should be written here okay so in the second expression and from this array or collection you are going to read one by one element right so that element we need to write here okay so basically this for each loop is designed to iterate the values of array and collection only okay 
So unlike for loop, you cannot use this for each loop for everything. Okay. So in the first example here, I'm printing the values from one to 10, right? So this example cannot be done using for each loop because you don't have this all the 10 values inside one container, right? So in this second expression, we need to provide some kind of a container where we have more than one element. So those kind of values only we need to provide here. So those will be arrays or collections only, right? So only arrays and collections will store more than one value. So that is why this for each loop is only designed for arrays and collections. Okay. So from this one, we are getting each item and we need to perform the statements here. Okay. So now the syntax is complete, right? So let's write the actual code here. So let me just try to print all the values. So same array I'm taking. Okay. So I want to print all the values of this array using for each loop. So first let's write the second expression. So the second expression is ARR, right? So this array name is ARR. So from this array, we are going to get one, one item, right? So in this array, what is the item actually? One integer value is the item, right? So here I will write int. So I will name it as element or anything you can say. Okay. So it's just a variable name. Then open the curly braces and close the curly braces. So within the curly braces, we need to print the values, right? So I will say sys out. So in the for loop, we are actually providing this index. Then we are getting the values using like this ARR of index, right? But here from this array, we are directly getting the element. So we are not using any index or anything here. So we are getting the directly element only. That means in the first iteration, five will be stored into this element. In the next iteration, 10 will be stored. In the next iteration, 15 will come. So we are getting direct element from the array. So that means we can directly print this element here. So now let me remove this one, the syntax. So let me execute this. So now you can see 5, 10, 15, 25, 60. So all the values are printed, right? So for example, if I have string type of array here, then I need to make this one as a string, right? Because from that array, you are going to get each element as a string type, right? So that is why you need to make this data type as a string. So that's how you need to use the for each loop. So now we have seen for and for each loop, right? So let's see what is the difference between for and for each loop. So the first difference is syntax. So the for loop has three expressions and in the for each loop, we have only two expressions and how we separate the expressions is also different. So entirely we can say that syntax is different. Okay. And the next one is in the for loop, you can go in the forward direction and backward direction also. So here we have printed the array values in the forward direction and in the backward direction also, right? But in the for each loop, you cannot go in the backward direction. Only forward direction is allowed. Okay. So from this array, you are getting this element. Nowhere you are having any option to get the elements in the reverse order, right? So that is why we don't have any backward direction. So that is another difference here. In the for each loop, you can only access the values in the forward direction. You cannot access the values in the backward direction. Okay. And the next one is there is no indexing here. Okay. So you don't know which index you are actually accessing. So from this ARR, you are getting this element, right? but you don't have any index actually. Okay. For example, if I want to print only a third index, you cannot do that one inside the for each loop, but here you can do that. Okay. So that is the another difference here. And the next one is you cannot change the array values here. So in this one, you can change the array value because you are able to access like this, the index basis. Okay. But here you are not able to access the index itself. So that is one more difference. Okay. So here there are so many disadvantages in the for each loop, right? So that is what you're feeling, right? So, but why we are actually using the for each loop? I mean, why the industry is actually recommending for each loop for arrays and collections? So that is because it is very easy to write. Okay. You see, we don't have to worry about the index or we don't have to worry about the condition, how much length it is, and we need to increase the value or decrease the value and all. Okay. So it is a time saving process because you have only two expressions. So you need to type less. So that will obviously save your time, right? So here, because of this user friendliness, the for each loop is so much popular when it comes to arrays and collections. Okay. So that is for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you have any doubts or if you are facing any issues while writing the program, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.